Hi, so today we're having a look at this epically, mysteriously looking 3D printer. This is the Pana Space One. It's aimed for beginners and private use or individual use, as well as teachers and educational sector. So it's a little bit more confined, a little bit more simple. So this little baby spots a direct drive extruder mounted on a linear rail, um, making up the X axis. It also has the 150 by 150 millimeter glass bed mounted on the Y axis, but this also moves up and down. So you have a machine that's very similar to the normal riprap style of machines. The glass plate is a cold plate, it's not heated and you actually use some glue to get everything to stick down, which is pretty interesting. So with that moving bed you end up with a total build volume of 150 by 150 and 150 millimeters. So it's a pretty small volume but for a beginner educational style machine I would say it's a very typical uh, build volumes uh, and especially that build volume is also optimized for material that could have some sort of warping in them. So I actually un unboxed this machine on a live stream if you didn't see that. That was pretty fun, pretty epic and if you watch the stream it took a little bit longer since I was talking to all of you guys but it's a very quick machine to get started with and it works out of the box. There were a few things that were uh, pretty f cool with this, especially the lighting of this machine. The LEDs make it look really cool and you know I really like LEDs in printers so that's a cool thing. Comes with a spool mounted on the side so if you want to use your own one kilogram or, or bigger spools you have to print a spool holder. But yeah, as you can see, I didn't really enjoy that solution. It, it untangles the filament from the side, which is not good. So I would recommend just printing some sort of other solution. Like this is actually not printed. I think this is from the Anet machine, but you can take any other spool machine and just load in the filament and there you go. But the solution is very nice if you want to go with their, uh, the, the Panaspace smaller spools, which is, I mean, it's pretty fair if you want to have it in an educational sector, have it all closed in. It's, it's very nice then. So of course, in the box you get everything to get going, you have some small spool of filament, you have the SD card, you have a few tools, a glow stick, a glue stick, glow stick? That would be pretty epic with some glow sticks. But only a glue stick and that's all you need to get going really. Uh, although the SD card has some information, you should download the newest version of the Pano Builder, which is the uh, closed slicer for this machine and we'll talk a little bit more about that very soon. But um, you also have some models on the SD card that you can get printing from the beginning. So that's nice. You can have a machine up and running without really having to install the software if you want to speed up everything. So the user face is overall very easy to use. You have the auto placement and the auto scaling. You also have a simplified user flow of all the settings. You can, uh, although it's a uh, closed source uh, slicer, you don't have access to all the settings but it's much more than I would thought that it had. So the first view, the first easier settings, they are very easy to understand and I really like how simple they are. There are still some bugs in the software that I'm feeding over to the guys, like how you close the menus and stuff like that and, and confirming your settings are saved. Everything like that is software, it can be updated very quickly. So uh, I expected a little bit more integration with pre-done um, models, but they have their own models that you can select from, so again, for the market, for the teachers, for example, that maybe don't have enough time to uh, process and, and prepare models, there are a in integration with my mini factory. So you can log in there, you have a selection of um, chosen prints that are set to be print on this machine, or I assume that they are tested and, and fixed uh, to that. So, so it's not, I don't think it's the full uh, library of my mini factory, at, at least not what I saw. So again, the settings that you can choose from the beginning are, of course, a little bit limited for the professional user that you might be. But I think that it, it stands out pretty well, that if you want to have a draft print, you actually get a pretty fast draft print. The quality is not there, you don't get the very good looking surfaces and all like that. And the reason for that is exactly that. Most of the types of scenarios where you use this machine, quality is not prioritized as high as quick print, so you allow more people to have access to your prints. Imagine yourself if you're in a classroom and 
everyone's going to print on a higher setting. That nobody's ever going to have a finished print because everyone's want to maximize the size, maximize the strength, and maximize the print quality. So the T-shirt in this case can fairly easily just set. You have to use draft mode. And then everyone's going to print fairly quickly and I think that's a great option, especially when it works. It's not like a draft that's failing because it's too fast, it's actually a draft that works. Uh, with that said, on the other side of the scale, if you have some more resolutions kind of stuff, it handles it okay. It's not perfect. Um, there's some few examples here that, I mean, it's totally okay. but. Or again, it's not orientated to be the best printer for small details. For that, you would probably have to either upgrade your ones or look somewhere else, maybe some other technology as well. And finally, all the slicing is very simple. It's quick. You get all the uh, how much grams, what time it takes. And I think that the, I believe that the time is very accurate. It feels like I could almost take a stopwatch. Uh, so that's very nice. Again, very good for a teacher, for example. Yeah, software is good. I would like that the SD card was a large SD card because it's kind of easy to lose it in the SD card tray. So then again, you can just print via the USB cable. And when you do that, you get all the normal settings like you can send key code, but you can send like commands for moving one millimeter point. You can do all the normal stepping and the preheating and temperature monitoring and stuff like that. So that's very good in the software. So I like the panel builder, but I, I want to see it progress a little bit more. So if we go back to the hardware, I think that and hopefully you agree, the Pano Space One is a very beautiful machine. It has very sleek line, it's well designed. Um, it's it's actually very beautiful and I really like the strong LEDs that you really can see what's printing, you can see it in the darkness. I think that's really, really cool. As for sound level, it's pretty average, but I wouldn't have in the classroom trying to talk about some other subjects. And for like printing at home, it's totally fine. But if I'm having it in the same room next to me, I'll probably put on some headphones. One of the really cool things that I really enjoy, as I just said, is the Instagram friendly presentation of your model. So it, it moves the glass boat forward, it presents your model and it backlights it very nicely with the LEDs. I think that's super beautiful, a great touch, a great thinking of getting your model to be visible. I mean, that's going to be something that every kid in a classroom is going to want to take that snap kick. I don't know what people use anymore. I'm getting too old, man. Whatever social media people are using. One of the downsides with this machine is that there's no automatic leveling. With that said, you level it by setting the offset. So at the beginning of the, um, when you set it up or if when you want to level, all you have to do is to move the plate up and you can have the papers normal. I'm using the um, printer kit papers to just get that friction between the nozzle and the build plate, the glass plate very well. You can do some leveling with a really weird tool um, that kind of goes in under the glass plate so you can screw the screws. I understand that that was the best engineering solution, but I don't think it's a very practical solution for the users. But I've moved this machine all around the house and I've never had to level it. It, it sticks after that. And speaking of sticking, this uses a cold glass plate and it's non-removable, which I think is a little bit bad as well. But then again, in a classroom, people are going to drop that plate. So the fun thing is that I tried a lot of third party solutions to adhere to glass plate because as I am, I usually override glue at all. White glue is not something that I'm comfortable using, but that's individual for everyone. But the fun thing is that when I do that, I don't get it to stick. But when I use the normal glass and the included white normal paper glue, then everything works well. So that's really mysterious that, I mean, it couldn't be the glass plate, right? There's something going on here. And of course, speaking of materials sticking to the plate, materials. I've been using regular types of uh, filament. So for example, filamentive RPLA here, the included PLA, uh, a wooden PLA as well, but that, that was so-so. So I would recommend the hard truth here, and that is to stick with regular PLA. That's going to be the best solution. It's going to work. It's going to be the reliable machine that you want to have. If you want to experiment a little bit more, I'm sure that you could possibly push some um, more abrasive materials through, but that would also mean that you wear down the nozzle a little bit. And uh, printing flex materials, I think it should work. It is a little bit exposed um, at the dry gear, so I'm not sure that like the softest material would work. But if we're looking at something like a semi-flex material, that should work fine as long as you down the speeds, of course. The 
time I've had this machine and the prints I've done, I've never had a clog or a, a issue like that. I feel that it's very reliable. Uh, it does grind a little bit on the filament, so I noticed that you end up with a little bit of dust on the filament. I think it's the design of the gear. It's a very strong gear, but it seems that there's a little bit of a build-up. So that's something that during maintenance you should uh, probably have to clean the drive gear every now and then, which is fairly easy. You just open this hatch and you, you access it. Yeah, so I want to summarize this machine by separating the users. So if you feel that you're a user that is a little bit more beginner, maybe in, in educational sector, you, you have your, your students or you are a student that want to get more students in and more teachers engaged, I think this is a really good machine to consider. It's focused on that type of user. If, if, I mean, if you like building your own kits and you're extremely into 3D printing as a technology and modifications and, and really squeezing out everything from it, it's not for you. Um, then you're better off with the kits and, and the, you, I mean, you know what machines you should look at then. Um, but if you're a, a complete beginner or, as I said, a, a teacher in the school environment, it's absolutely something to consider. The price is really nice. It, it variates like $100 up and down um, with sales. So you should check out the links down below uh, for more information about that. And I think it's, it's a very easy machine to scale. Um, so if you want to have a few of them, it's very easy to manage. Uh, it's not a lot of work around the machine. If you scale up with kits machines, for example, it's much more harder to maintain all of them, especially if you're a teacher. So uh, yeah, I think it's quite optimal for those kind of customers. I hope all that makes sense because it, a lot of us that watch YouTube videos and a lot of you that's following this channel, you're more used to being really hands-on yourself. But I would argue that one of the tools to get a bigger mass into 3D printing, especially when it comes to schools and teachers, they need something that they can kind of don't have to invest too much in. They have to keep it simple, keep the task not on the printer. Um, that's not the goal. The goal is not to maintain a printer for the kids. The goal is to use that technology and try to uh, achieve good designs, great engineering, fun projects, math examples, physics uh, examples. There's so much you can do that requires a tool that's a little bit easier to work with, even though it's limiting that you can't use all the kinds of cool materials and mod it and stuff like that and yes it's not open source which for some is really important but and for not for some it's not that important so, so hope that all makes sense um drop down some comments down below if you agree with that or if you want to argue a little bit with who should have what kind of technologies i'm super happy to to uh, interact with you guys in the comments at my twitter at my instagram my facebook and all those kind of places so with that said, I really hope that you want to subscribe and check out this channel with some more content, some more videos. And of course, check out the links down below. They might help you find more information about this one, where to buy it locally. Um, and of, yeah, that's it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you comment and ask me any questions if you have any. See you guys in the next video. Bye.